It's spoiler in time, folks. This is the time when we talk about the things we've been watching and spoil the hell out of them. This week, we're going to talk about the movie Shazam. Uh, we're going to recap the first four episodes of the HBO series Barry, and we're going to talk about episode five of season one of The Office UK. But before I begin, I should introduce myself. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. That's right. And we are joined by two fantabulous guests. We, of course, have uh, from, what, Forbes.com, Junk Food Cinema. We have uh, uh, Meryl Barr joining us. How you doing? Great to be back, gentlemen. And, uh, of course, from Number File and Singing Banana Fame, we have Dr. James Grime. Hi, everyone. Hi. We, we, we flew out at great expense <laughs> to, to come out. I, I think, think his most famous role was as your opinions on the last episode of Court Case. <laughs> Best known as the meh guy. I completely yeah. failed to defend Downton Abbey. It, it was perfect. It was uh, It was exactly my opinion, <laughs> per our agreements. <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, here to uh, pitch in with uh, Office UK. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to start off, as we always do, by checking out the Summer Movie Draft. Well, now, Brian. Oh, boy. You had both movies this weekend, Pet Cemetery and Shazam, and they both have outgrossed what you already made on Dumbo. I mean, if you, you combine them together, you you would think that in a vacuum that would be a good statement, <laughs> but instead it's a scathing indictment of the position we were in and the position we continue to be in. Uh, Dumbo, of course, was up to seventy six million dollars. Shazam grossed fifty six million dollars, lower than I had hoped, and then uh, Pet Cemetery twenty four million dollars, which is much more in line with what I would expect from even a very good horror movie opening. Um, but it's not directed by Jordan Peele. What can you do? And per dollar, you're doing okay for Dumbo. Uh, yeah, but but again, it's like uh, we 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 spread out very wide over very many movies, looking for one to overperform. And so mm -hmm. far, all of them have ever so slightly underperformed our expectations. I think Shazam shouldn't have underperformed. Everybody seems very pleased with this number from Shazam, though. Yeah, I th I thought it would. I, it, but well, buying well, it at twenty three dollars makes it a tough mm, proposition. Yeah, but but even then, I I thought Shazam was was going to be a surprise uh, hit. I th I thought that the early uh, the response to Aquaman would indicate that there is a greater appetite for G DC silliness, and I thought that this would. Uh, fit a, I don't know, feet, feet. A, you thought a, it'd be on pace for like 250 million rather than 200 or less. Yeah. Well, it's no, there's no way it hits 200 million. I, I I'll mm -hmm. be, I'll be happy if this thing makes it past 160. But if word of mouth is good, right? Like Shazam is a movie I'm skeptical of and ha hearing your take on it, which was that you liked it among yep. other things. Spoiler. It makes, it makes me consider going to go see Shazam. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that content more. Uh, but meanwhile, we have coming up uh Hellboy. Are you expecting anything from Hellboy, Tom? No, a team Hammerson has the next two movies, actually Hellboy and the Curse of La Urana. And I don't think either one of them are going to move the needle much for team Hammerson. Avengers Endgame comes up at the end of April. Frog Pants went all in on this. There's no way Endgame makes the kind of money it needs to to win this thing, right? I don't know. It's yeah. crashing websites and, and selling out tickets. Uh, it It probably won't. I still want to say that I agree with you there, but... I mean, uh, the possibility of me being wrong gets greater because of that. Yeah, okay. Uh, Meryl, wh wh what do you think Endgame's going to gross domestic? Oh, more than $5? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, anyway. I think you're right. <laughs> I'm a, with you on this. A bold like, proposition. I mean, the question to me is not, um, is Endgame going to trounce everyone? The, the question is, how much is it going to hurt? And I, 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 what I think is going to be the big indication is, is this going to be the first $250 million domestic opening? Um, if it's that, then it's going to be a brutal summer for the rest of you. Um, if it ends up opening right around where, you know, um, Infinity War opened, which is a little more than $200 million, I believe, or right at $200 million. What was it? No, what, what was it that, uh, um, of Infinity War open something. There was something about Infinity War's opening that was huge, right? Or that everyone thinks this would be the first huge something. 
I, I, uh, I'm, I'm certain, but the important thing is like it's going to have to make over seven hundred million dollars to have a chance at winning the entire league because we're looking at Captain Marvel. Uh, what was it? Captain Marvel plus Toy Story uh, Four. Toy Story Four plus it. Like that, uh, Captain Marvel's already near near is going to cross four hundred million. So it's like uh, th there's no way there's no way Endgame is gonna is gonna defeat that, right? I think it. I think Endgame could pull out seven hundred. I think and because. I think Endgame could pull out those Avatar numbers, those Black Panther numbers domestically, where it's just like, it, oh, just over and oh, people going over and oh, like this is this is it. This is the event, right? This is the ten years of buildup. This is like this is this like it. Ironically, it, it kind of it, the James Cameron analogy is kind of perfect, where no one expected Avatar to be Avatar, and then Avatar does seven hundred million domestic. Because it was like James Cameron's first movie in 10 years, right? This is that, again, this is a 10-year build up to the ultimate climax. Um, yeah. well, of I'll, just... I'll, I'll, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, some numbers about Infinity War. The first week came to 338 million. Uh, that's the first week. The first weekend was 257. Domestic or worldwide? I believe these are domestic. Um, and it did eventually domestic gross in total 678 million. So, uh, Jim, what is the international excitement for for the end of, of this, uh, what, 15-year uh, arc we've seen? Yeah, so I'm excited about this as well. I'm just trying to find a cinema where I can watch it in peace. Oh, yeah. where, when can I find an empty cinema? When, when does, uh, when does uh, uh, the Alamo Draft House make it out to the UK? <laughs> That's the important thing. Uh, yeah, but, right. but the culmination of uh, 10 years is going to be really exciting, even in the UK. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah. Well, let's get to something also very exciting. The fifth episode of The Office UK. Uh, this is part of our, our library watch. We always have one going on that's out and complete, so we know we're going to get to the end of it. And uh, this was the week where we had, we had uh, pairing off. I, I, would, I would hesitate to call it dating, but we had pairs. We had couples being examined throughout this episode, Brian. Yeah, look, um, in general, I understand there's a lot of hurdles for me to get over, uh, you know, rehearing the original version of a story that 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 I had a very particular U.S. centric experience with. Um, in general, though, I have come to love and appreciate David Brent for his particular foibles, and I'm starting to see how the cast is different structurally as far as storytelling goes. This was I thought far and away the weakest episode of the first five that we've watched so far. Pretty much the takeaways are um, people want to date. So we do some very unofficey things and it all takes place in a discotheque. We uh, we we have uh, David Brent's niece uh, asserting herself sexually to no real character transformation. Um, I, I'm not sure what I got out of any of this, to be honest. Uh, what say you gentlemen? I mean, what's fun? So I actually knowing this was coming up because I'd never seen uh, the UK office or the American office for that matter. Whoa! Um, Whoa! I, 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 I haven't. There's a there's a laundry list of things that I missed. Like I just I just came in. I was just at the wrong age at the wrong moment for it. Um, and American office is one of those things. Um, but I so I'd never seen UK office. So I, I last night mainlined those first five episodes, and I agree. Like, this episode is the weakest of the five. Um, it's not – there's just something off – there's something off and something off-putting about it as well. And the biggest thing that's bothering me is the, uh, Ricky Gervais' character is his, – his, his weakness as a person – is so played up how how unassertive he is as a boss is so played up far more while at the same time being the the just the worst boss when he's doing the you know let me you know let me get the polaroid out and take a photo of the really pretty female um you know uh interviewee but the male interviewee like no let me just snap that photo really quick like that all of that just felt really weird compared to the four episodes that led up to it and like when I episode three was amazing. I when I, I don't know what where you guys fell on episode three, but for me episode three when I saw it, I was like oh the okay, quiz I oh no it was great it, it, because it did it showed it showed that weakness in a relatable way yeah whereas whereas this is uh, the inverse it's it's a very unrelatable version of the weakness where you would you know turn turn your uh, 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 interview opportunity into a casting couch right. 
it just it just felt the episode just felt um odd like it was a, like um, like in six episodes you shouldn't have throwaway episodes and this felt like a throwaway episode yes, like that's right, what, what it are was. the scraps like like i i feel like it would have been just fine in the middle of 18 20 episodes but 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 as one of six it was really uh, i was like uh we're not we're not doing anything okay tom I, I, I'm waiting to hear from the UK on this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Defend your series. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> he speaks for the entire country. <laughs> I will. I will. Um, so, um, yeah, so I love the UK office. I saw it first time when it went out. I fell in love with it from the first episode. I thought, this is amazing. This is not something that's been done before. Um, that episode, I do remember. Um Maybe no, it isn't a classic. It doesn't go along with the guitar episode. The guitar episode was amazing. That was right. great. The quiz episode. That's amazing. the real quiz. Um, but I do remember it is perhaps a good reflection of a very depressing night out in the UK. I I got the impression that they uh, this is the next to last episode, and if you put it in that context, it did very much feel like a next to last episode of a season where it's like, we're not really going to advance much. We're going to remind you what people are upset about. And that's, I, I, that's I mean, what it felt like. I'm like putting chess pieces in place. I might add one other observation since I'm only here for this one episode <laughs> um, to, to compare it with office us. Mm -hmm. I think the theme in the office us is that the people you work with is a, a second family that is not the theme in the office uk agreed uh, the the theme is the people you work with are not your second family they are people you share the same carpet with right uh, and so we have a very different point of view uh yes also also uh, your version of the office is dirty you have a dirty <laughs> version of the office yeah, this this was probably the most dated episode, uh, g given the the things that are the things that they choose to call out as being unacceptable, and the things that they don't choose to call out as being unacceptable within the episode. I think would would change if it were to come out as a new episode today. I I don't think it was a throwaway episode at all. I think they were trying to hit uh, the idea of hey, uh, in this place where you all share your own carpet sometimes you want to lay on the carpet with each other uh and is that okay and let's let's examine how that works from the david brent one-sided situation uh from the finchy uh creepy guy who probably gets whatever he wants situation uh and like you said dawn's you know trying to proclaim her sexuality and even a little bit uh of the receptionist and 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 sort of that still uneasy situation but maybe they just shouldn't have had so many examples because none of them rise to a point where you say, oh, you're really telling me something about what a relationship would mean in that situation. And we end with a meditation on how abused poor Slough is while also showing us why it's so abused because it only has two bars and they're both rotten. Uh, there was also, I, I, I felt like there was a bit of wasted space with the whole Gareth doing, teaching a safety class. With, what was that? I, I don't know. hitting on Don. That was him hitting on Don. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but 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 uh, I, I feel like, you know, let's tighten that just a little bit. It took bit. a long time. Yeah. <laughs> can I, can I, uh, also, sorry, sorry, can I ask a general question? Sure. Uh, what is your take on Gareth? Uh, well, uh, so he's not quite the same as, the as US. Dwight, right? Yes. Uh, although I, 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 Gareth is out of everyone. I feel like the character that's. I mean, I guess David Brent uh, is is very much come into his own very quick. But he's the second one that I'm appreciating being very different from his U.S. counterpart right. as, as well. But but what we're seeing felt the most Dwight Schrudish that I've seen from from Gareth in, in a while. Oh, really? I, See, I I don't think it is at all. Oh, really? I, yeah. I'm at such a level of inconsistency with Gareth. Like it, there are episodes where I'm like, okay, I get his shtick. I get his thing. Like, is it the pilot of the second episode where he builds the wall between him and Martin and, uh, and Friedman? Um, uh, but then this episode where he's so sexually repressed to a very disturbing degree. Um, and it's just, it really turned me on him as a character. I'm like, I get that he, you know, I get his shtick that why he might have the reaction he has when he finds out that he is being courted for a three-way. 
but yeah, it, that 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 didn't age very well. Like, no, I, I was, it's over the top. It's <laughs> way too far. Yeah. Yeah, I I feel like Gareth uh, Dwight Schrute had a misplaced confidence underlying with insecurities. I feel like Gareth doesn't even really have the confidence. He's just insecurities, like right out there. He does kind of flip wildly from from one side to the other. Um, but I don't know. I, I'm I'm excited to continue to you know learn more about uh, this this proto Dwight. I refer to it like it's a proto Dwight. Well, like, I, I think Dwight Homo habilis or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, okay, yeah, a proto Dwight. Yeah, it's a, it pre precedes the Dwight. Um, I, it's funny. I, I rarely think of the U.S. office anymore when I watch this, uh, and I think part of that has a lot to do with the fact that it's been so long since I saw it. Uh, whereas it's so frequent and recent in, in your in your experience, co Brian. Co correct. I don't think and and help. to your uh, to agree with your point, uh, less and less do I think about the translation. In fact, it's really only when I get kind of bored where I'm like, wait, what are they going for? And then I'll realize, oh wait, there. This is what I saw. This arc mirrored in this particular thing and uh, that definitely happened during this i'm like i'm like what are they what are they going for because i felt just a little kind of tuned out a little 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 bit slow for my for my taste a little slow slow for your taste i see what you're yeah. doing there yeah uh it's funny i do we have any other thoughts on the office uk before we move on it's great <laughs> yeah i thought you were gonna say meh no <laughs> no i i have somebody I would not say allow that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then uh, let's move on to talk about Barry, uh, which is currently airing. And uh, you are watching season one right now. We're currently seeing season two on HBO. So the, the plan is is for Brian to catch up and then we can start talking about the new episodes of Barry because it just came back with season two last week. Uh, what do you think of the first four episodes of the season one Barry that you watched? Faster to get into than I had feared. Um, Steven Root is the real star of the show. I don't understand why anybody's on screen besides Steven Root at all times. Um, uh, loved his whole plot of talking his way into asserting power over this gang and using Barry as leverage and all that. Um, in general, I am a bit allergic to any time Hollywood says hooray for Hollywood. And that is the biggest thing I'm struggling with, even with Barry, is... Whenever they get to the acting class and you could tell that these are actors who get to portray people trying to be actors and they mm -hmm. get to congratulate themselves about how good they are acting like they're trying to get good at acting while not being good at acting. Uh, I, that, that, that is a challenging roadblock for me to get over, but this story is interesting enough that I'm along for the ride anyway. I don't really understand why uh, if there's a if there's a medical justification for why Barry is a such a sociopath who quite literally can't wrap his mind around picturing what it's like to be at the grocery store or whatever uh maybe, I think it's maybe PTSD isn't it isn't that what it's supposed to be no nah, I, I I don't know if if if, uh, if that is the case then maybe you know show me something before you got PTSD to to portray mm -hmm. that. Uh, all I know is like, you know, he's basically a robot and it's not clear to me why and, and outside of, you know, killing people is tough business. Here's here's my question to you, because uh, I haven't the reason I haven't watched it is the exact reason you just said, which is the Hollywood, you know, Hollywood on screen in Hollywood. Do you tune out when they're in those moments, in those scenes in the acting class? Is that when you tune out of the show? It's like, I get, what's up on Twitter right now? Oh, we're back on here. Or are you still engaged at that moment? I'm doing my best to give it my all, much like the actors who work very hard acting. Well, uh, well I, I'm having a hard time understanding exactly what your objection is, because if you're going to show an acting class, you have to have actors in there. So there's kind of sure. you've kind of set up an, a, an impossible situation for someone to impress you if that's your objection. Uh, I assume there's more to it than that. And this is not and Kate, for anybody who's listening who hasn't seen it. This is not celebrating Hollywood. This is showing you the 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 manipulative part of not hollywood this is the the uh, the person who's not even really a successful actor manipulating people who want to be actors by taking their money and giving them false hopes it's, that 
that is the the situation there. It's the moments where they're getting ready for a gig and they've decided what monologue they're going to do and they talk about the monologue and then they want me to think of that movie and they want me to appreciate how they do that monologue in the context of the and all I'm thinking of is like, "Ugh, you're going to make me sit through that monologue, aren't you?" And, but they're all bad. Uh, correct. They are. They're so all not... bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, all things being equal, I don't get a lot out of those scenes where I'm watching good actors portray bad actors. Like I don't think you're going to like this series season then. I don't think you're going to like the series at all because the entire series uh, is in orbit over the fact that there are people who want to become actors who will give money to someone who is just shy of a scam artist in order to feed that dream when there is absolutely no hope that these people will ever actually become actors yeah, or if the, they do, it'll be pure chance. I, I think, and, if, and, and, th and it sounds to me like just the setup, that setup alone is enough to make you go, I can't get past that. There are actors doing this and it feels self congratulatory to me. So I don't want to watch it. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. You, 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 uh, you put those words in my mouth about not okay, wanting to okay. watch it. Like, I think you underestimate just how good the Fonz is in this and just how great Steven Root is. Like I am, I'm enjoying it. I, tolerate the main it's it's like um <laughs> it's like watching home improvement and it gets to the part where you could tell tim allen's gonna do his her, her, her thing and you don't like that that's not that's your least favorite part but it's also okay. I, what I it's think all you about decided not to like it in advance that's what i think uh you decided not to like that part and there's no way they could ever do it in a way that would that would make you happy. Wait, isn't that how liking things works? Is you no, decide liking when things you like? Is, I'm open to see what I'm it's like. You have and I either like it or I don't like it. I think you've decided if an actor goes on stage and gives me a monologue, I will never like it. There's no or, way they could do it that would that I would like. No, like in general, I dislike the taste of strawberries, and they keep putting strawberries in it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> right. I'll sit through this uh, to get back to the good parts. That's fair. It's yeah. just strawberries. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I like strawberries. I mean, you know, it, 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 like, nobody's judging you. You're 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 not on trial I, here. I didn't think you were going to like berry because strawberries are an essential flavor. <laughs> there is a lot dish. of strawberries in berry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's half the word. Straw. Oh yeah. <laughs> <you go. laughs> but 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 but, right. but in no way like I I want you to know that I am enjoying it and I do plan to watch all of it and get caught up. But but the parts I'm enjoying uh, have a lot more to do with the assassination side of things than the trying to make it in Hollywood side of things. Okay. All right. We'll see. <laughs> There's pressure. Oh no, no, that's the sound of somebody who doesn't want to disappoint a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> the level of frustration on Tom's face in that moment. Is <laughs> Well, there are more than just strawberries coming. <laughs> I promise you that. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else about Barry before we move on? Uh, no, I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it, and I'm glad that I'm binging it. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, let's talk about the movie Shazam. <sighs> Meryl, did you see Shazam? I did not see Shazam, but I'm I, I'm I'm very what what's gonna get me to go see Shazam in a theater is to hear as much about it as possible because I wasn't sold. And the more I keep hearing about it, the more I am sold about it. So I want to hear as much as I can about it. Right. right. Now. Okay. So here's my short take a uh, long time ago. Remember DC and joy, they used to be an item. They were kind of adorable together and then they broke up no. and none of us really remember why they broke up, but I guess it didn't work out. Uh, if you've ever wanted to be at the party where Joy and DC run into each other again and start to remember what was great about the two of them together, this is that movie. Uh, I don't believe that Aqu uh, Aquaman, <laughs> I don't believe the Aquaman was that movie because it was trying too hard to be a good action movie. Uh, and then it got silly and it distracted me. Whereas every moment of silliness in this is great. It's, it's joyful and fun. Uh, I, uh, the only downside I had is that, is that they rated as PG 13 and they're not kidding. Like, uh, there were some moments that were a bit scary for my six year old, but, uh, even then she got through it and hit her face during the scary parts. It was a delight. I, I, it's probably my favorite DC thing since, uh, you know, the Nolan Batman movies. Uh, it's, it's great. It was wow. a whole lot of fun. It was, uh, it was uh, entertaining me at every moment. I loved that they did an obvious thing and I enjoyed it because I really had just not considered that they would do the obvious thing, which is pull together all the kids into having special powers. And I had an almost Avengers like grin on my face when they did that. And they're all, you know, realizing that they have these special powers themselves. 
Uh, as somebody who loved the TV show as a kid, I liked that they didn't give it too much homage, but it was just familiar enough in that cave that I, I had a little bit of nostalgia without it overwhelming it. I think the only thing that really bugged me is I never really bought that Billy Batson and Shazam were the same person. They were both enjoyable. Uh, I didn't feel like that was that kid in a grown-up body, really. See, I had that same problem in the with the trailers, right, where it – I, I didn't feel like if when you're doing that kind of movie, it feels like Zachary Levi's job should be playing off the mannerisms of the child actor, but more than the child actor should play off the mannerisms of Zachary Levi. And it felt more like Zachary, Le Zachary Levi was the adult version of a very different personality than that kid. Um, and that's how I got off the trailer. So it sounds like, well, my, well, my fears are not subsided but the movie offers enough of other things that weren't featured in the trailer to make me go, yeah, you should check that out. The moment, uh, and, and we are in full spoiler territory, but the moment that all of the kids uh, grab that staff, that is a quintessential movie magic trick. When you pull off a magic trick correctly, all of the elements have been in front of you the entire time. And the moment it comes together, you're like, I am so stupid. It was right I in front of me the whole the time. Yeah. And I grinned and laughed and, and, uh, and clapped. It was, uh, I had so much joy. They do such a great job with that family of writing right up to the edge of you you don't really believe like this is this is too perfect but but i believed the family i believed the the the, the adoptive parents i uh uh i i believed that i should be afraid of 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 the founder of amazon.com because he's secretly a villain uh the uh it, it uh it was great um uh i i really liked it a lot and just when you think it's gonna get cheesy it gets self-aware uh, also, the only weird take is, man, they make those seven deadly sins. Uh, uh, they, 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 they spent some money on some HR Geiger, Geiger stuff. It was, it was uh, a bit much for, uh, the, the creature design was, was legit That's terrifying. That's what scared your daughter, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They're pretty, they're pretty creepy looking. Although I feel like those may be like, like designed in another property, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, it felt like assets. that design from an actual comic or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, the, oh, there was some, one other, one other thing. Um, no, I've, I've, I've lost it. Uh, I, I, I liked it a lot though. I, I, it was, it was, it was the most fun I've had at a DC thing in a long time. Oh yeah. No, I, hands down. I mean, wonder woman was a better movie maybe. I'd agree uh, with that because it's a different movie. Uh, but Shazam is a whole lot of fun. Yeah. Highly recommended. All right. Any other thoughts on Shazam? No. Oh, oh, I did remember my other point um, is, man, oh, man, is it really fun watching them try really hard not to say the words Captain Marvel? <laughs> like they go to ridiculous lengths to avoid saying those words. And and it's as though they, they've just painted it red. Uh, it was, it was I, think they, I think that because that's one of the things the movie does really well is when you expect you know, when you expect the family to have a vicious secret, they make a joke about the family having a vicious secret. They just they they're very good at that self-awareness. And I think that was an example of that was, you know what? We're not going to say Captain Marvel. So let's play around a lot with not saying Captain Marvel. So it's clear, like, yeah, we all know, man. You know, you guys hear about the thing that they're dealing with. They're dealing with a rights issue with that right now where they guess in the credits. There's this uh, a character who's like uh, in the in the comics. It's Captain Marvel Jr. is the name of a character. And they couldn't obviously call that character that in the movie, in the credits. So it's just like adult uh, Adam Brody or whatever, who, whosoever character it was. That's funny. Um, because they they don't know what they, they now they now have to come up with a bunch of names for the sequels because right now they got nothing. No, I'll tell you what's a lot of fun, though, is I look forward to small talk at parties where I'm able to say like, oh, Captain Marvel. I loved one of those movies. It was, there was a really good Captain Marvel movie that I liked a lot. Yeah. No one's going to know what you're talking about. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. All right. All right. Fair enough. Uh, well, uh, this has been a lovely spoiler in time. We had an embarrassment of riches in our guests. Uh, yeah, of course, if you guys want to see all of the amazing content from our guests, uh, make sure to check out uh, uh, Singing Banana Channel over at YouTube. Uh, and, uh, and, and Meryl, what's the best place to see your stuff? Uh, Twitter.com slash Meryl Barr, M-E-R-R-I-L-L-B-A-R-R, WordTetris.com, Patreon.com slash WordTetris, and Forbes.com. Just Google my name. It'll come up. Yeah. 
Thanks, everybody, for supporting us at patreon.com slash cord killers, where you get this episode early before everybody else, because you're special. Back us, patreon.com slash cord killers, and we'll spoil you again next week. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>